Hey everyone, it's Zara and I am back to film my reading journal for the month of October. So diving in, I read every day this month, which was really good. I've had uh, the last few months and, you know, through the summer, I haven't read every day. And so it was nice to just pick up a book every day, even if it was just for a short amount of time. Like these are just a... Um, under an hour so you know probably for a half an hour or so that I read on those days but just nice to pick up a book you know right before bed for first thing when I get up in the morning that kind of thing and then diving into what I read this month I read eight books which was good I've had a slow reading summer just busy just a lot going on and so reading eight books this month felt more normal you know, to what I was doing earlier in the year. I think I will fall short of my reading goal this year, which is fine. Reading some books is always better than reading none. But I think I'm like 25 books shy of my reading goal. So unless I like really ramp it up in November and December, I think I'll probably be, you know, in the 90 book range, maybe a little less. So Anyways, eight books in October and my favorite being Fourth Wing. Then we have my, you know, just kind of calendar overview for when I started and finished books. So you'll see there's multiple days where I started and or finished multiple books in a day, which was good. You know, just days that I didn't want to stop reading. Then I had mostly physical books this month. I did have a few Kindle and a couple of audiobooks. I will say though, the second audiobook I was reading was Fourth Wing, and I ended up listening to that. I started with the audiobook, and then I switched over to the physical book, although I did pick up the audiobook a couple times for pronunciations of places or character names, because fantasy books can sometimes be a little bit hard for pronunciation, a name you've never heard before, etc. Um, then for my challenges, I had Bookopoly. I completed two. I've had the more than 500 pages goal or challenge on there for a while. I thought it was going to be Drums of Autumn that I finished for that. Honestly, Drums of Autumn should just kind of be on my, like, DNF for the moment. And I'll probably pick it up later. I don't know that I'm going to finish it this year, especially trying to finish more numbers of books just to get my reading goal um but I might maybe I'll pick it up in January just to like fresh start start from the beginning um because I didn't make it very far in it when I did start it and I haven't read it in months so anyways I ended up reading fourth wing instead for the for that prompt then I had a, jo a genre that I don't normally read I read later which is horror Stephen King and then I, for my Roll Your Read, I needed a book with a friendship focus, and I didn't accomplish that this month. There were some books that had friendships in them, but I didn't know. I feel like a friendship focus is almost more of a, you know, just like a, you know, fiction book. Um, not necessarily a mystery or not necessarily a romance, because I feel like all of those have different focuses the mystery or the romance so haven't read that yet hopefully we'll complete one in November um these are all the books that I read this month um minus drums of autumn which I still haven't finished and then goblin which I started but just didn't finish I didn't complete any bingos which is which is okay there were some books like I wanted maybe like a witch or a vampire book just didn't happen um and then didn't read my book of the month, you know, some other ones that I didn't finish. So then for top priorities, I did read every day and I focused on my October reads, which I made a stack of some mysteries, thrillers that I had on my uh, reading shelf and, you know, pulled, a, pulled from a couple of those when I needed a new book. So did pretty well otherwise. So then moving into my Goodreads tracker, as I said, I am just going to fall a little short um, 
of 100 this year, I believe. Right now I'm at 73, so doing pretty good, but, you know, probably won't read 27 books in the next uh, two months, but doing pretty good, mostly physical books this month. And then again, eight books, 2,631 pages, so we're working back up on number of books. So into what I read this month. The first book I read was Later. This is kind of a shorter Stephen King novel or book and this one I downloaded just on a whim because we were on vacation. I get up much earlier than my husband and I just needed something to read until he woke up and this was available so I checked it out from Libby. And this one is about a kid who sees ghosts. Um, he sees ghosts of people that have recently died. So within, you know, a couple of days of their death and then they disappear. And it takes him a little while to know that he sees ghosts because most people when they die, you know, they die in their sleep or it's kind of a natural thing. You just like, there's not really indicators that they're dead. Um, or, you know, that other people can't see them. But then he also, because he sees people kind of in their last image of life, so if they were, you know, murdered, or if they got in an accident, um, or things like that, you know, they would have the same appearance as, you know, like their last moment of life. So some people, you know, there's very obvious signs that they're dead because you know, they've been shot or other things. And so he can see these people. Uh, his mom tells him, you know, to, to not tell anyone. But there are a few people in his life that, that know, obviously, his mom's one of them. Um, you know, some close family friends that know. And so he, you know, as he gets older, um, some people want to use his gift for their gain. And so, you know, he gets put in some situations um, to kind of use his gift to help others or others, you know, take advantage of his gift. So anyways, I gave it four stars. I thought it was okay. It was a little slow moving in parts. Um, I didn't think it was as kind of scary as it made it out to be, but I still enjoyed it like a three and a half four stars. Then I have Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore, and this one sounds more whimsical. Title, like, the title sounds very whimsical, and the book was not whimsical, so I didn't enjoy this one. This was probably, like, my least favorite read of the month, if I have to be honest. Yeah, this was probably my least favorite of the month, and so you have this bookstore called the Bright Ideas Bookstore and Lydia works there. She is working, you know, the closing shift. It's midnight. They're they're just ringing up their last customers. They hear some weird noises from upstairs. Uh, eventually they go up to investigate and they find that someone has um, committed suicide and, um, you know, they, they try to save him, but, you know, he's dead. So, she gets wrapped up in this kind of mystery of why he killed himself or, or, you know, what's going on because he has her photo in his pocket, like a childhood photo of her. And so she's really unsure, you know, why he has that, why, you know, was he, does he know something about her or, you know, kind of why, why does he have this? She also has kind of a dark past because she is the survivor of a uh, murder. And so, um, yeah, she kind of has her own things she's grappling with. So basically just trying to figure out why he killed himself and, you know, what is his connection to her or her childhood or, or what. So it was an okay book. I thought some of the mystery parts, you know, kind of the, the puzzle that they have set up, um, for her to solve is a little far-fetched 
um, I think it's a little far-fetched. And then also to the way it was presented in the audiobook, which I don't want to spoil anything by saying the exact, you know, how it was done, but I, I didn't enjoy it in the audiobook form. It was like very confusing. Um, it's almost like reading out a puzzle and, you know, like all the pieces don't match. And then, you know, like if you're looking at it on a page, it, it would make sense or, you know, like you could kind of figure it out. But as an audiobook form, it just was like gibberish, you know, like a minute of gibberish. And then they'd eventually figure it out and stuff, um, you know, kind of as an example. So I thought it was less enjoyable as an audiobook. Um, I found myself getting bored a lot in the book. Like I said, just not my favorite. I gave it three stars, honestly, like two and a half, three stars. Um, there were parts I liked, but overall, not something I think most people would need to read. Um, then moving on to something I'm sure everyone in the brother has read is the four is fourth wing. So this is about Violet Sorengale. She is from, you know, kind of this distinguished military family background. Her mom is, I can't remember like the general or some, some high ranking military official, both of her siblings, you know, have proven themselves, you know, great dragon riders and she isn't supposed to go to like dragon rider college but her uh, father dies and her mom forces her to go into uh, dragon riding school and she's kind of sickly she's you know kind of small and so no one really thinks that she's going to do well because like she's just never never trained for it you know you kind of spend your life preparing yourself for what you know college you're gonna go to she was supposed to go to the scribe college which is you know like reading books um not the physical dragon riding college and um they have these dragon riders that fight in you know, their wars, protect their borders, etc. Um, so anyways, it was, so it's all about her first year at, at this uh, dragon riding college. And I enjoyed it. I, I like, I thought it was good. I liked the characters. Um, it's, it kind of had hints of like a Harry Potter, you know, because you're going off to school. Um, but much more death. Um, you know, don't get attached to like any characters, I would say, because I swear it's, you know, it's like every page it felt like someone died, and especially in the beginning. So, um, you know, definitely not for the faint of heart, um, you know, in terms of whether or not you survive this dragon riding college or not. Um, but I gave it five stars. I have plans to read the second book in November and then I think the last I think there's only three books supposed to be in the series um so the third book is coming out I believe in January so I'm gonna jump on that train even though I know I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about the second book um you know I will still read it and find out for myself next up we have Finley Donovan right rolls the dice I think this is number four in the Finley Donovan series and book three kind of ended on a cliffhanger moving into book four so I don't want to spoil too much but essentially their um, misadventures move to Atlantic City. Finley Donovan is an author who has gotten herself into some really you know unbelievable crazy situations. Um, she's gotten involved with you know some not so good people in the law um, you know in the in the, in the crime world uh, inadvertently. And so, you know, she's kind of dug herself into some, some trouble. They're trying to fix things and, you know, they're trying to covertly go off to Atlantic City to go fix these problems. But, you know, then all of a sudden the kids are coming, the mom's coming, the ex-husband's coming. So then it ends up being kind of this like family road trip, vacation, where they sneak off to, you know, try to solve the mystery on the sly, um, or, you know, try to figure things out, you know, for their purposes on the sly. Um, it's just kind of a fun, 
fun book. I do recommend this series, especially if you like books like um, like Janet Ivanovich or things like that. I I just think they're fun, easy, you know, kind of a lighthearted mystery. Then we have Tangled Up in You. This is another continuation of a series. Sometimes I feel like I get really lucky. I think a lot of people have moved only to renting digital things versus physical books from the library. And so um, those last two books in particular, Finlay Donovan and Tangled Up in You, um, and even The Seventh Veil of Sloan, they're all pretty recent releases in the last, you know, six months or so. And I was able to get them with like no weight from for the physical book. I think if I went to the, the Libby app, it, I would have had a weight. Um, so that's kind of my, my thing that I've found is if there's a book that you really want, it seems like there's a shorter wait for the physical book because I just think a lot of people don't do that at their libraries anymore, at least not at my library. Um, so anyways, Tangled Up in You is the, the uh, part of the Meant to Be series. So they're all retellings of Disney stories. And I think Disney has contracted, you know, these books are, um, they're involved with the publishing and some some aspect. So this one is obviously based on Tangled, um, you know, the Rapunzel story. And I enjoyed this. Each each of these books has a different person that's written it, and they don't connect in any way. Um, they've done The Little Mermaid, Cinderella, and uh, Beauty and the Beast, I think, were the other three. But I just enjoy them. They're fun. I think this one was really well done. Um, not exactly sure how they were going to do it. And you kind of know generally what the plot's going to be based on the story it's based off of. But I, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. So um, quickly, we have Ren, who lives off the grid with her parents. She's, you know, like a master of all trades. She's great at everything. But, you know, she's wanting more. She reads a lot of books. She's taught herself, you know, all sorts of things. And she's decided that she would really like to go to, to college and her parents are very reluctant to let her go you know they're worried that she's going to uh you know kind of not want to come back to that and like that the real world's gonna suck her in and you know chew her up or whatever and so she convinces them to let her go she says she'll come home every weekend she's not going to use like she doesn't have a cell phone she's only going to use a computer to do her work for school she's not going to you know search the internet or anything like that you know she's going to continue to to leave her lead her somewhat sheltered life in a bigger space is kind of what she agrees to um and if you know like the character of rapunzel she's very curious and and things like that so doesn't quite work out that way um and ends up she ends up going on a road trip with um Fitz is his name and so that so it's a f kind of a fun um I don't know a fun twist on it I enjoyed it I liked the road trip aspect and elements I thought you know there were a lot of things that I didn't guess or or things that I don't know I just liked the way they told it so I gave it five stars um I really enjoyed it Next we have The Big Four, which is my next book. I've been trying to read all the Hercule Poirot novels in order um, because he's my favorite literary detective. I love Agatha Christie. And so this is, I think, number five, maybe, in his series. And this, I guess, was originally told as a series of short stories um, in like a magazine or a newspaper or something like that. So they kind of fit together interestingly in the book. I don't know, there were times, it just feels a little disjointed um, just because like each chapter, chapter or um, you know, one of these stories, um, yeah, would have been almost a standalone um, in, the newspaper or magazine or whatever. Um, so essentially you have Hercule Poirot. He is 
or he he finds out about this kind of like secret crime society called the big four and there's four kind of like international um like crime people that are working together behind the scenes to you know obviously get their own uh, motives fulfilled I guess so um, but they're very powerful they're very rich they have all this power and like no one knows about them and so he has taken it upon himself that he's gonna you know bring them down he's gonna figure figure this out and so they have all these weird things that happen or little bits and then they keep tying back to the big four um so I liked it a little you know I liked it it was fine but it just felt more like a spy novel than a classic Hercule Poirot, you know, like classic mystery. So for that, I didn't love it because it just didn't feel like my characters. You know, Hercule Poirot is not James Bond, in my opinion. So uh, it was fine. I read it. Move it on. Then we have The Seventh Veil of Salome. This is based on the story of Salome and Herod and um, like the biblical story and killing James or um, is it John the Baptist? Now I can't remember. Goodness, I'm not. Um, but it's based on the story of Salome and Herod and you have this 1950s movie production, Hollywood movie, um, that they're you know making this production and then, so you have three points of view. You have two Hollywood actresses from the 50s. You have one that got the role of Salome. She's never been, you know, kind of like one of those, they found her at a dentist office. And, um, you know, she has never acted in Hollywood before. She's from Mexico. So she, so it's a, a, you know, different kind of culture. There's racism towards her and other people of, you know, not white, um, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed, um, look type. And so, um, so you've got that. Then you have the actress that really wanted the role and didn't get it. And she is, you know, has been in Hollywood her whole life. Her dad took, you know, was a vaudeville actor or something like that. And he, um, he kind of had a failed, career he tried to get her into Hollywood as a child actress and she didn't really succeed and now she's you know kind of mid 20s mid to late 20s and she still hasn't made it big and she really thought that this was going to be her role and doesn't get it and is very perturbed by that and then you also have the third point of view as Salome back in, you know, biblical times, kind of her story being told, you know, by herself, I guess. And so I enjoyed it. I liked the different points of view. I really like um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I've read, I think this is like maybe my fourth book that I've read from her. Mexican Gothic is still my favorite, but I enjoyed this one. I will say this is the first book that I read from her that didn't have kind of a mystical element. Usually she has some sort of like, you know, there's some sort of Incan magic or dark magic or things like that. There's just some sort of like magic, you know, magical realism that happens in her books. And that didn't happen in this one, which is fine. Um, I was waiting to see if there would be something that came out. Um, and wondering how they were going to do it because I was far, far enough in the book that I, I thought if they did bring it out it was going to just be like kind of wild but but not no magical realism in this book um I also think she must really like movies because the last book I read from her Silver Nitrate that one was also about making movies in Mexico and so obviously she has some of her kind of passion projects or things that she really enjoys. Um, so it's fun to see an author write about that. Um, I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. Like I said, not my favorite book from her, but I do like reading books from her. And I picked this one up 
solely because I saw that she was the author. And last but not least, I have The Wife Upstairs. This one is a Jane Eyre retelling. To be honest, I've never read Jane Eyre, so I didn't get that until I was reading the reviews later. Um, so obviously if you've read Jane Eyre, you probably know more about it. But you have Jane. She's a dog walker in this really fancy neighborhood, and she ends up crossing paths with Eddie. Eddie is a um, widower. His wife went missing a year ago. She's presumed dead. Um, they think that they drowned in a boat accident, and, um, you know, his wife, B is, is dead. So Jane kind of steps into B's life, um, you know, kind of moves in with Eddie, um, and, you know, has, has all of these kind of remnants of B. Um, and then obviously, based on the title, um, you could probably predict that maybe someone is not dead. Um, but I enjoyed it. I thought, it, I thought it was good. I read it in two days because I was, it was just a fast read. I, Paige Turner. Um, so yeah, that was everything I read for this month. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye now.